Okay, um, looking at um, the Gronyard Simulations uh, series, Incredible Courage, uh, taking a look at the 2012 uh, Rules of Play. Um, the reason is is that I just got Incredible Courage at Elkingen, and uh, very, very, um, very, very interested in playing, but it's going to be a little while because I have a number of games already already in the queue so um, I still wanted to take a quick look at this and um, now I noticed that the rules of play that came in Elkingen are several years after this I have a date of several years after this I'm going to go ahead and assume that the core at least the core design is the same and I thought I would just concentrate on the combat section um, but uh, in any case, a fascinating concept of a Napoleonic uh, battle game at the company scale. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, uh, Introduction-wise, the Incredible Courage game system is, is, is designed to simulate tactical level combat in the battles of the 18th and 19th centuries. As with other GSI simulations, these games will fit together with other smaller segments of the Battle of Austerlitz. Uh, for a larger and more definitive simulation with an incredible amount of detail that's key but not as much complexity as you might expect um, I know one review said that complexity was high so um, I, I guess maybe it's how you look at that um, let's see what else game scale units are represent I heard it was 100 meter <coughs> hexes there it is Map hexes represent 100 meters of terrain. That is not a lot. Um, let's see, and they are units are represented at either company squadron or section level. Most companies consist of 150 men, squadrons around 100. So it is that scale. That's just that sounds fascinating. Um, all right, combat. This section defines how and when fire and melee combat are conducted combat is always voluntary that's even interesting always voluntary at this scale <laughs> there are two types of combat fire and melee right nothing unusual there adjustable strengths play an important role in determining the actual strength of a unit when it takes when it makes an attack or defends in combat that sounds interesting fire combat is expressed as an amount of firepower directed at a hex that's fine but I I'm pretty sure that, or I read elsewhere that this is uh, fire, fire by individual units, so okay. It is, I guess, amount of firepower directed at a hex. <laughs> uh, and melee is expressed as a comparison between the two sides' combat strengths. A unit's strength may never be reduced below one. Cavalry may not fire. I guess that's understandable. Uh, units that fire during the turn may not melee. Units that move during the turn may not fire. So that I'm sure is a function of the time scale. I believe the turns are 10 minutes. I think I saw that elsewhere. Um, so I guess that makes sense. With these with these types of um, mostly massed uh, formations um, and fire relying on volley fire essentially. Uh, adjustable strengths are critical to determine the outcome of every combat. When a unit declares that it is going to conduct fire or melee, the player rolls a d6. I noticed in the Elking in game it came with two d6 and two d10. So here's the d6 to determine what the strength of the unit will be for that combat. Each time a unit engages in combat, this must be done. Each side has separate tables to make the determination. The tables are, div are divided by nationality, so these are by nationality tables. Within each nationality, there are areas for each formation. Formations are the primary determinant of the firepower and strength of a unit. Okay, uh, this has all the basic formations. I didn't notice any unusual ones. Uh, column line skirmish, basically. Uh, formations are primary determinant. Fire combat is conducted one unit at a time. Fire combat range for infantry is limited to one hex distance, so 100 meters. Each unit may fire, and all units must fire by themselves, which is a 
which is funny wording, but units fire individually. There is no collection of fire, again, <laughs> interesting terminology, no collection of fire against a target. There's no um, combination of the fire from individual units against a single target. Units stacked together may fire at different targets. Targets may be fired at more than once. Yeah. Units can only fire through their front hexes. Refer to the, yeah, this has a nice, uh, or Elkingen has a nice formation chart played, actually. Infantry, each infantry unit starts by stating the target of the fire. Uh, then the firing player rolls the D6, references the firepower modifier chart for their nationality and formation, and determines how many combat factors are added or subtracted from the base combat strength of the unit. I assume base combat strength is the number given on the unit counter itself. This is also adjusted by the LOO level. I know that's the level of organization, so that's the current losses, so to speak. That new number is the number used to roll a D10 on the fire table. Artillery. The fire value of an artillery unit is based on the base combat value, the range to the target hex, and the difference between the range of the artillery unit and the range to the target. So an artillery unit with strength of 4 and a range of 10 fires at a target that is 4 hexes away. The actual firepower for the attack would be 4 plus 6, oh, for a total of 10, that would be used as the column on the fire table. That's interesting. This number would also be adjusted for LOO level. So artillery can have reduced LOO as well. Again, level of organization, I think it, it is. Results are applied immediately. Adjusted rolls below one are considered one, blah, blah, blah. Melee combat. So that's it for fire, infantry, and artillery. Hmm. Melee combat. That doesn't seem like that much for fire. Now, I understand it's firing individually, and it's what it's two die rolls per fire. Melee combat is conducted at the end of a, of a formation's movement and before moving on to the next formation, which suggests to me that it, this is a by formation design, um, action by formation design. Melee is close combat by both infantry and cavalry. Uh, it is voluntary for infantry and cavalry not charging. It is mandatory for charging cavalry. Makes sense. Units may melee alone as a, as a stack or as a collection of stacks. So here you, you are combining. Interesting that the thing, same thing couldn't have been done for the fire. Hmm. Units may be meleeed more than once. Each hex of a charge that a cavalry unit moves into gains the charging cavalry unit one point of impetus strength up to a maximum of three. Now I wonder if there are markers for that. And is applied only to the attacker in a melee. In a counter charge situation the impetus bonus is applied to both sides. Okay, So there is counter charge, not surprisingly. Uh, counter charging. To determine the combat value for melee, each player rolls a d6 on the variable modifier table and cross references the roll with the formation. Okay, Sounds similar to fire. Also add the charge impetus. The result is then applied to the base combat value of each unit in a stack. Oh, okay. Adjusted by the LOO marker. Okay. That could get a, sounds like that could get a little busy. Units of the same regiment may support, support a melee by being stacked behind and adjacent to the lead unit lead element. But what's the lead element? <laughs> Echelon units behind may support a melee and add a plus 2 DRM for each hex with supporting units up to a maximum of plus 4. This DRM bonus applies to regular melee and melee after charges. Okay, This bonus does not apply for units initiating melee from a woods or town hex or for support units with two or less LOO. Okay. If two or more attacking units have support, only the, su the supporting units providing the largest die roll modifier are considered. Supporting units must be one behind the other. Defending units 
Never get the support die roll modifier. Okay. I think this is supposed to represent the momentum of basically line line based combat with short range musket fire. Uh, retreat before melee, so skir skirmish units, units in skirmish formation. Uh, that are the target of a melee may retreat for melee cavalry units in skirmish formation. So, so we have cavalry in skirmish formation as well. Uh, may retreat for melee two hexes. Each side applies the results of the melee. The the attacker, if supports were involved in the melee, must subtract LOO from the support units. Okay. Um, oh, this is okay. Applying the results must subtract LOO from the support units. If the table shows three LOO for the attacker and the attacker had two stacks in support, the player would subtract two LOO from the first support stack and one LOO from the second support stack. How would you know that? Huh. If the attacker advances into the hex after combat, all the support stacks advance along the line of advance as well. Yeah, okay. So this does sound like the momentum of line-based combat. Line-based, yeah, combat. Units that retreat and end up in a hex in excess of the stacking limit are eliminated. Squares forced to retreat do so in open order formation. So, oh, so there's an open, I forgot about open order as a formation. Units that retreat as a result of melee are having one LOO must face away from the enemy so that well yeah of course there's facing an artillery unit that is forced to retreat rolls a d6 if the player rolls a 5 or 6 the artillery unit makes the 3 hex retreat and is placed out of battery this die roll is adjusted by subtracting 1 for the for a HQ stacked in the hex or subtracting 2 for HQ with the leadership rating stacked in the hex All right, 7 to 1 melee odds are the highest allowed treat any additional as seven to one, and one to three minimum. Any low treat any lower is one to three. Special. All units in a hex can fire at or melee with the enemy. So this is different than games like the one I'm playing right now that I have on the table, where, for example, one unit, say the top unit, represents the front unit. In the game I'm playing right now, the front unit is the top unit and it it alone fires but here it's also this is um, was it one half the ground scale cavalry may melee without making a charge they do not receive the benefits of impetus or fighting different unit types okay, okay. squares ignore melee retreat results unless the result calls for a three level of order, level of organization, loss, or more. Uh, once a unit is meleeed, it becomes locked in place for the purposes of retreat before melee, oh, for any additional melee. 